Ladies and gentlemen, our first speaker of the night, Mark Skogabold. Happy 233rd birthday to the longest lasting republic in the history of the world. Thanks to the blood and sacrifice and brilliance of so many people, we became the richest and the strongest and the most individually free people in the history of the world. Now our federal government is exploding in size and power and our republic is being traded in for socialism. Our only hope is to rekindle the magical dream of our founding fathers and tell everyone that this form of government has worked and socialism has always failed. Words only have power if you mean them and boy did our founders ever mean them because they pledged their lives their fortunes and their sacred honor to start a new country of free and equal men. They didn't quit no matter what. They had no fallback position. The words of the Declaration were worth dying for. This Declaration of Independence has become our national creed. Abraham Lincoln was inspired by it and Martin Luther King was inspired by it to oppose first slavery and then inequality. It's what the 4th of July is all about. It's what inspires many of us still. Remember these glorious words. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and endowed by the Creator with certain inalienable rights. And among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I want to help you know these 56 men better and understand that they were willing to make enormous sacrifices. They weren't impetuous kids or teenagers, they were chosen and revered heroes and representatives of all the 13 colonies. Most were middle-aged or older and the youngest, Benjamin Rush, was only 31. This was a gathering of eagles like the world has never seen. And yet they were humble and they gave their all for freedom. They were not down and out desperate men and Paul Harvey points out that for the first time in history a revolution was started by 56 men who had everything to lose and nothing to gain except freedom. They were highly educated, like Reverend John Witherspoon, the president of Princeton, who became the inspiration to the father of the Constitution, the fourth president, John uh, Madison. Both the second and the third presidents were there, John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, who wrote the document in 17 days with some help. And then the 56 men there voted unanimously that George Washington would lead them into battle and become commander-in-chief of the armed forces as they declared war against the greatest army and navy in the world. Most were wealthy, most were authors, 24 were either lawyers or judges or both, nine were farmers in old large plantations, many could read and write in several languages, most were Bible scholars. They wanted freedom from laws made without their consent and taxes levied without re uh, their representation. But they also wanted to have the right to join other churches besides the Church of England. Many wanted to choose their own government, governors. All the governors were appointed by the king. Many wanted to end slavery right then and there, but they weren't allowed to. Liberty was more important than their lives and fortunes. The penalty for treason, listen to this, was to be hung until unconscious and then tortured and dismembered so there was nothing left to bury. They knew the danger of signing the Declaration, so they kept the signature secret for six months. But before it passed unanimously, there was a lot of quibbling and qualms and nervousness, and there was a vigorous debate. Some thought, hey, there's got to be a better way than this. On July 1st, 1776, John Adams rose and spoke. This speech changed history. Before God, I believe the hour has come. My judgment approves this measure, and my whole heart is in it. All that I have and all that I am and all that I hope in this life, I am now ready here to stake upon it. And I leave off as I began, that live or die, survive or perish, I am for the declaration. It is my living sentiment and by the blessing of God, it shall be my dying sentiment. Independence now and independence forever. Yes. Shortly, shortly after, in dead and tearful silence, the Declaration of Independence was unanimously approved and to break that pregnant, pensive, profound moment, up stood John Hancock and said, Gentlemen, the price on my head has just been doubled. And then Ben Franklin came up to John Adams and said, We better hang together or we shall all hang separately. <laughs> 
Nine died during the war. Five were captured and tortured before they died. Some died right after the war, like John Hart, who was driven from his wife's deathbed. His fields of gristmill laid waste. More than a year he lived in the woods and caves, and when he returned home he found his wife dead and all of his 13 children gone, never to be seen again. He died of a heart broken for freedom. Twelve had their homes sacked, looted, occupied by the British or burned. Francis Lewis had his home and everything destroyed and his wife in prison. She died within a few months. John Hancock was among the richest men in America, and yet while watching war raging, he stood outside of Boston where he owned so much real estate and said, Burn Boston, though it makes John Hancock a beggar, if the public good requires it. Thomas Nelson Jr. borrowed two million to support the war. During the last battle, he urged Washington to bombard his own home because General Cornwallis had made that his headquarters. His mansion was destroyed, and after the war, he paid back all of his debts, wiping out his entire estate. Thomas Nelson, one of the greatest heroes in American history, died bankrupt and was buried in an unmarked grave. He gave everything for freedom. The next time and every time you say the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, also pledge your lives, your fortunes, and your sacred honor. Think what 56 men did in that kind of powerful and spiritual unity. And then find leaders committed to the spirit of the Declaration of Independence and pay the price to let them to every position possible. And then I want to close with a little picture of that movie, of that scene from Braveheart. When these humble Scottish peasants who had no rights at all were gathered by William Wallace. And, and the British troops marched and rode in by the thousands and outnumbered them three to one. They were getting nervous and many started to leave and wanted to run. And William Wallace, in, in his movie, rode his horse back and forth in front of them and gave this great challenge. And I want you to think about this. He said to those guys, yes, you could fight and die, or you could run away and live for a while. But someday, lying on your deathbed, and every day from this day until that, wouldn't you like just one chance, just one chance to tell your enemies, you can take my life, but not my freedom!